food itself. What are some of the, the uh, steps that people can begin taking maybe as quickly as this very day uh, to make sure that they are prepared and have preparedness for their family with regard to food supply? I'm actually glad you brought that up because uh, what I'm going to say is going to touch base on several of the things that we've been talking about in all the areas that we've been talking about. Um, one of them is is that um, stocking up, stockpiling a supply of food is important. It, it's right up there with air and water. You know, if you can survive a while without food, but food is essential, especially if you have children or things along those lines, you know, people that really depend on you to to really feed them. And it's also important to keep your energy supply up. It's important for your health. It's just important. So basically, it's expensive to stockpile food. However, if you do it intelligently, you know, then then you can stockpile a mass amount of supplies you know, it'll still cost you something, but it won't be as much. A lot of things that I've been taking into consideration lately as I've considered my preparations is um, you see all these new shows now on super couponing. Again, YouTube is a great resource as well because everybody is just filled with people that are doing these things, and I just find it so inspiring because these people are super couponing and they're stocking up on all this stuff And they have this huge stockpile that they wouldn't, you know, and it's cheaper for them to do it that way. So not only are they saving money, but they're getting two things done at once. They're saving money that could be useful in other areas, and they're stockpiling food while saving money. I mean, what can be better than that? Exactly. So um, another thing that I wanted to bring up as well is, you know, when we were talking about basically getting back to basics, learning how to do things, and also about children and teaching them things, is um, teaching them how to make things for themselves, making bread, like you brought up. You know, making bread, my aunt and I, we do it. And, you know, I let me tell you something. Not only do I get to spend valuable time with my my family, but it's fun. I know how to do something that not many people know how to do. Another thing I know that I get to do with my family, you know, that I value and truly cherish that a lot of people in my generation just do not know how to do anymore is things like canning and preserving. And I'm still learning those things. But these things are not going to be very useful for you in a book, in, in a case of an emergency, if you don't actually know how to do them. You know, it's like, do you, you know, do one, see one, teach one kind of a thing. And I'm sure I mixed that all up, but you get my point. Absolutely. So I think that it's really important to get your kids involved and get your family involved or even learn how to do it just for yourself, you know, and you get to preserve a massive amount of food that way. And it'll stay good and it's better because you know what's going into it. You know, you're not getting all of this genetically modified food and I could totally go into that. That's a whole other segment, I'm sure, but... <laughs> You, 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 make, you make excellent points about, uh, you know, exactly what you said, whether it's uh, uh, canning or, or preserving your foods that, that maybe you've grown in your own garden. Uh, you're, you, you said it so aptly. You can't just pick up a book and start doing it. First, there are some supplies involved, the, uh, you know, the mason-type jars themselves, the, uh, I'm trying to think of what you call it, the, is it a pressure cooker or a steamer or something along those well, lines? you can do it in a regular pot, but you have to have, like, this little metal rack so that the, the jars don't touch the bottom of the pot. But, uh, you know, those things are fairly cheap, and mason jars or ball jars or whatever, they're cheap. You can buy a big case of them for, like, six bucks, yeah. and they come with the tops and the little lids and everything, and... You know, just practice with it, but preserving your own food will save you a lot of money, and you can create a huge pantry of stuff to just, you know, even if you're not preparing, it's a good way to save money, you know. Exactly, exactly. And um, it's just a great thing to know how to do. You bet. But once again, the key is to, to start today because, it, once it, once again, if we are in the midst of one of these uh, events, however tragic and, and uh, much we would hope that they don't occur, 
uh, once again, some, many of those items will be the first ones that leave the store shelves from people who've already been doing it, and they just want to add to their supply. So it's, it is well worth the time to not just have a book on hand that describes how to do it, but go ahead and, and acquire some of those supplies and get practice. Get started practicing. Uh, work out uh, the trial and error aspects of it today as opposed to trying to work them out after uh, it's already become time where those things are needed. And, and Nia, I, I wanted to add to that list as well, some of these food preparedness things. Uh, it, it, folks, it's as simple as your next trip to the grocery store. If that's 10 minutes from now or, or in the next week, canned goods. A lot of your favorite canned foods that you already have been using and have loved all of your life have more on hand. Buy twice as many as you were going to buy before you thought about this program or this preparedness. Campbell's Soup. It lasts an awful long time, folks, in the can. Go ahead and have uh, some of your favorites on hand, just more of them. There's also uh, multiple different routes to go in terms of dehydrated and or freeze-dried type foods. Uh, your humble host has taken advantage of, of one company's products, and again, I'm not paid to make this uh, product placement, uh, but maybe I'll send a clip of this uh, to them and see if we can't get something done. <laughs> but eFoods Direct is one company that I've done business with. Uh, as uh, They uh, provide... Uh, uh, dehydrated foods. Uh, my loved one and I are big fans of their chili and, and tortilla soups, and we bought a box that we can have on hand that will give us uh, more than 50 meals of, of either one of those at a cost that fits right into our budget of when we go to the store and, and try to do our purchasing on our budget. Uh, it fits right into that cost structure of uh, what we would spend per meal uh, for any of the things that we buy you know, on a day-to-day -day basis at the store. So there are a lot of those options that, that once you start to do your homework, you'll find some things that, that uh, not only do they fit into your preparedness plan, but they fit into your budget as well. Uh, my other thought along those lines is, is uh, how do you prepare those different foods? What if we are without electricity for multiple days or multiple weeks at a time? How do you go about cooking and preparing foods? Uh, Nia, any thoughts along those lines? Yes. Um Again, the, the foods and the cans and the jars, that comes into place. You know, I had no idea you can cook chicken and bread in jars and ah. seal them away. How weird is that? But you can do it, <laughs> and yeah. you wouldn't need to cook it. You know, you just it might not taste that great, but you'll survive. You know, again, these things are you can create whole meals, soups, stews, chilies, like you were saying. You can put those in cans or get them freeze-dried or... Um, you can invest in a dehydrator. Some of them are very inexpensive, and you can freeze-dry a bunch of uh, fruits and vegetables and, you know, use them as chips or whatever. You can rehydrate them later and eat them then. You can do a lot of things. And also, I wanted to add something that I forgot to mention earlier. Um, when you are looking for resources... Again, you know, a lot of people don't like to coupon. They think, oh, it's embarrassing. I used to be one of those people, too. I'm still kind of teetering on the edge of that. I'm like, you know what? But once you see how much you can save and put towards other things, it will amaze you. Again, online resources, great. Other resources you can go to for, um, for you know, to learn things in general uh, is your local community center. You would be surprised how many classes and seminars and things like that that they offer for either free or cheap. Again, your newspaper, your local health food stores, they all have calendars of events. And again, a lot of their classes are very informative. They have a lot of guest speakers that are very uh, knowledgeable in their topics. And again, they're very either free or they're very cheap to attend. And it's also something interesting. You can meet a lot of different people, make friends. Networking is another good thing because you never know who might be useful to you in terms of knowledge, skills, or contacts, acquaintances, and whatnot. And those are, are things that you definitely want to um, hold on to. So, yes, you have made just an enormous amount of points. More, more great considerations also, Nia, from you. I, I certainly appreciate uh, having your expertise and experience as part of the program today. And, and folks, uh, you, you know, we, we've kind of talked about food here for a bit. I think, that, uh, I think that out of all of these different aspects or areas of preparedness, the food one is maybe going to be the easiest for you to get to work on uh, solving. 
not only does the CDC website on the zombie apocalypse talk about food considerations, but also, you know, there are so many companies now. I made mention of the one that I've made a purchase from, eFoods Direct. There are so many others. That's not the only. I think there's another brand, Mountain House, that offers a, a, a wide range of product supply as well. Uh, there are also a number of different canned food options that are of larger size, more, more bulk, in other words. Uh, did you realize you can get canned bacon that's actually pre-prepared? Uh, it's kind of like the stuff that I use because I'm lazy that I get from the store and I don't want to cook the bacon from start to finish. They have pre-cooked bacon, and it actually uh, I, I've got some of this on the way to me. That you can get it in a canned format so that it's lasting perhaps 20 years on the shelves. Uh, you can get canned uh, ground beef, canned uh, sausage, and uh, roast beef, and turkey, and chicken, uh, like in two-pound size cans, so that it's it's more so uh, ready and able to help when you're preparing food for an entire family or a larger group. Uh, those things are available. Do your research out there. There's lots of places that supply those things. But what I'm thinking is very important for us to talk about now is how do you cook those things once again if that power goes out if you can't use the electric stove uh, or if the gas supply to your house is is interrupted so you can't use uh, if it is uh, gas heating or that you or excuse me gas cooking that you use what are your other considerations well folks uh, there are th th there's the good old-fashioned charcoal grill the question is do you have enough reserves of charcoal on hand to be able to use that as a cooking option for perhaps weeks or months at a time so stocking up with your charcoal and the other supplies that you might use in that regard. Please keep in mind that, because uh, I've heard some folks say, oh, if it worse comes to worse, I'll just burn wood in the grill and cook over that. Well, did you realize, folks, that many of the types of wood that you might find, if you try to burn that and cook over that, you might very well be inviting in some health issues or concerns that could make things worse rather than better, unless you've done your homework about exactly what type of wood you would be attempting to burn in that regard. Uh, another option, aside from the good old-fashioned charcoal grill, would be propane. Many of us do have propane gas grills that we use, but once again, do you have a reserve of that on hand? Do you have more than one tank, a backup supply? Another great uh, consideration that many folks use uh, who are uh, seasoned campers, uh, there are small propane grill type uh, formats. They use the smaller cylinders, but there are some companies that make conversion kits so that you might have one of those small or portable type grills, and that might be essential because it might be difficult to transport your full size grill. Uh, they use conversion kits where you can use a larger tank on the smaller options. And now, one other option that I'm not sure about. Nia, I'm curious. Nia, have you heard about solar ovens? Uh, 